Previously on Super Idols RPG After a disastrous infiltration of the Crimson Signal building, the members of Rhythmix dragged themselves back to Karen's place, but barely got any sleep before having to go to school the next day. Alan got a little more sleep than the others, due to having been magically teleported home by Karen of all people. Their sleep was understandably fitful after that. After school, the club met again to regroup and discuss what to do next, ultimately resolving to accept the Snapdragon's offer to go to Camp Grandstar for a weekend of training with their powers. Now, after the club meeting has wound down, our heroes disperse. Most to go home and get some well-needed rest, and some off to other obligations. It's after school now, you're on your way home, but then you realize that it's probably a good idea if you're going to go to this training camp over the weekend, it would be good to let the people at Rain Shadow know about your plans, and you haven't been to the studio in a while, so you think, oh, it might be worth your while to actually, like, go there and maybe let Grace know and see if there's anything else that needs to be done while you're there. Yeah, I head there and there's, I'm sure, an entrance for people to come in and transform in privacy before, you know, doing idle business. You finished up with everybody and you still have an environment club meeting to go to. Um, I assume you're not going to that as Queen Bee. No, absolutely not. She was feeling a little better about the others. She doesn't feel like the others hate her or judge her too harshly for what happened, but she's still a little... Well, she's definitely feeling guilty. You've headed home for the day, finally, and rolled in the door of Aunt Jen's house. What are you doing as you get home? I think at this point, Jaden has been running on fumes (laughs) the entire day. So I think like the moment he crosses the boundary of his like Aunt Jen's place, it, it ends up being a bit too much. He's like, okay, I need to sleep. Your your siblings maybe try to say like hi or bug you or whatever when you get in, but it's very clear that you're very tired, so you don't get as much heck as you normally do. Mm-hmm, yeah, because most of the time I feel like she'll quit back. I think She's either just kind of like nodding or putting a hand up and just keeps on moving till she gets to her room. <laughs> yeah, Tony gives you like a horrified look like she's not quipping back. Like, what the? Something's really wrong. <gasps> she's dying. <laughs> <laughs> what is your first order of business upon getting home? I'm just going to probably be like, I'm home. And do the teenager thing where, like, I don't even put my shoes on the rack and just kind of kick them off against the door (laughs) kind of thing. Anyway, so you head to the area where Mary's big dressing room and sort of dedicated area of the building is. And sure enough, you see Grace hurrying down the hall with a a stack of papers and uh, file folders in their arms as as they're running down to one of the offices down that hallway. And they catch sight of you like, oh, oh, hey, uh, uh, Valerie, hey, how's how's it going? Uh, It's, um, it's fine. And uh, I actually just wanted to let you know if, uh, well, uh, can, can, do we need to go walk somewhere you can set those down, or, or is, is this a good moment? I, yeah, actually, that, that, that would be good. Hang on. Uh, come with me. And uh, they, they grab your, your hand and take you to the, the office that they're headed to. And they give a wave to like uh, some, one of the guys who are working there. This is clearly like their like, accounting department or whatever. <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, the guy there waves and thanks them for the papers. And they give a, uh, a sigh of relief, like, ah. 
sorry, Mary's had me running around all day. Uh, it seems like they're they're gearing up for uh, a few shifts and activities around the studio uh, right now. So, I guess heads up. There's there's a storm coming. I think. Hmm. That's that's good to know. Thank you. Uh, I I stopped by to let you know that the the club has been invited to a training camp over the weekend. Oh, so oh, that's uh, for oh. for idols and for for training with powers. So I think this will be a a good a good opportunity for strengthening my skills, especially with the group. Oh yeah, um, I I guess ideally that would be great. Um, I I don't know how that works with Mary's schedule. I know she. She said that she had something in mind for you specifically, so uh, you might actually want to talk to her about that. Um, I, I think it sounds great, uh, like, based on what she's told me. I think she might actually really like that for you, but I, I just want to make sure that she doesn't, like, have something else that she wants you to be doing instead. All right. Uh, so you, you, you think I should talk to her now? Uh. Yeah, that would probably be good. Actually, now is probably a great time um, because she has mentioned you a couple times today. I think uh, she probably actually would like to see you since um, we haven't really since the since the gig. And she's kind of anxious right now about it, I think. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Yeah, uh, she's just in her dressing room office area right now um so if you give a knock there and, and let her know that it's you uh, she'll probably let you in okay well good luck with with everything going on and i turn and head down the hall all right yeah so you head down the hall and you find yourself at a door with a star with a raindrop in the middle of it and underneath that says mary rain As you are detransforming on your way to the environment club, Alan is walking. They've got a way to a ways to walk. We've got some time to roll some moves. Uh, we are going to roll your secret identity move uh, because time has indeed passed. So we want to see how you're managing your obligations. Let's see. Ooh. Okay, so that is a nine. I have lapsed on one obligation. And that's your choice too. So, what which of your three obligations do you think you're you're lapsed in? I think the last one we said was your delivery job. Yes, and I think uh, well, I think in this case, with missing school this morning and uh, the fact the last few days have been just almost a full time queen being, I think Alan has probably not been there much for the environmental club. Hmm, you're making it harder for yourself. <laughs> But that makes it more interesting <laughs> too. It's masks. So you're you're heading for the environmental club. Um, describe your feelings as Alan is walking towards the club. Do you think? Well, right now they would really like to just take a nap, but uh, I mean, it's something that they have to do. It's something that they have a responsibility, and uh, they really don't want to have to explain why they missed another meeting. So I think. As you're rolling up to the meeting, I think you also get a sense from the members that you see there. I think Professor Phillips isn't there right now. I think he's not at every meeting, just like Ms. Doyle isn't at a lot of your club mm -hmm. meetings. Um, but Kenzie is there, and she's working kind of in the compost again. And I think as soon as she sees you, she you can tell. Well, you've known Kenzie long enough. You know when Kenzie looks annoyed. Hey. Oh, hey. Um, I guess. Hi. Um, you showed. You showed up. I guess. Yeah. I I'm sorry. I wasn't. Wasn't feeling well this morning. Yeah. I get. Yeah. I didn't see you. I. I. Well, even with you not being at school today, I feel like I haven't seen you much. Mm. I mean, I'm sorry you weren't feeling well or whatever, but I don't know. I'm sorry. I. She looks. Frustrated, like she's trying not to take it out on you, but she's clearly frustrated. No, you're right. I've just, I've, I've been, been trying to fit together different things, and it's, 
Uh, like, I've been trying to get a few more hours at work, and uh, now that I'm sorry, Kenzie. Like, that's... I, uh, I know. I know you're sorry. I know. It's... What? Do you... Do you really have to be doing all of this all the time? I, I don't... I feel like this is... You've always been this way. You, you're you always taking on so much. And then you just can't help but let it all fall apart when you can't do everything at once. Like, why? Why do you keep doing this? Wow, can I take a powerful blow? Yeah, so he's just out cold. Like, it's not even like he ha- he doesn't dream or anything. It's just pure. His battery's at zero, and he needs to recharge right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think you probably uh, get yeah. home probably like I don't know, five five or six ish, and you yeah. you basically sleep the evening away. <laughs> like you don't even wake up for dinner or anything. You just like out like a light until. Probably around, let's say, midnight-ish, when yeah. you, something finally rouses you from your sleep. And it's the sound of a couple of text notifications on your phone, piercing through the veil of sleep. Kind of like grow, isn't it? Uh, and just rolls over and looks at his phone. And kind of, he kind of like shields his eyes for a minute because his phone's a bit too bright from just opening his eyes. Um, and then just kind of squints at the phone and looks down at the message. And the texts appear to be from your sister Alicia, who is <laughs> just getting up and getting ready for school. And they're still coming in as you're waking up. Um, she's texting very excitedly, like, oh my god, oh my god, Jaden, Jaden, you will never guess, these are all separate texts, <laughs> what I <laughs> got! <laughs> he, he, he's like... Kind of like lets that yawn and stretches and sits up in bed and goes, okay, it's Alicia, okay, she's probably getting ready for school. And unlocks the phone and looks at the messages and goes, oh, okay, needs to text back. What, what, what's going on? What happened? What did you get? And then she texts first one text that's just like a line of exclamation marks. And then the next <laughs> picture she sends is a picture of what appears to be a younger Aunt Jen with a guitar at like what looks like a college bar or lounge or something like that. Jaden like stares at the picture for a moment and then replies, no way. And like with a bunch of O's, a bunch of Y's at the end of way as well. It's like, is this, is this Aunt Jen as well in multiple set messages as well? Yes, yes. And she she sends, uh, there are more pictures that she sends even. Uh, there are more pictures that are kind of in that same vein, possibly at the same location. But there are also some that she's sending with Jen. Some of them she's performing by herself. Some of them she, she's performing with different bands. Like there's, uh, it's never the same band twice. So clearly she's played with yeah. a bunch of different people before. <laughs> <laughs> and they all appear to be in this this age when she was kind of in like her like early twenties, early to mid twenties. It's gonna take it back. Where did you find these? How did how did you find these? Where can I find these? <laughs> uh, and she responds, "I have to do the washing up for two weeks straight, but our parents finally cracked and gave me these." Oh my god! Okay. Apparently, Aunt Jen used to play in college all the time. I'm. I need to talk to her about this. I, wait, hold on. And I'm gonna like zoom in on the guitar she has. Is the guitar similar to the one she gave me? Uh, yes. Like the, she's not using that guitar in every picture. And yeah. you notice when you you do see the ones where that guitar is present, you notice the blue lightning bolt isn't on it yet. Uh, but it is that guitar mm-hmm. in some of those pictures. Uh, other pictures she has like just a regular acoustic guitar. So like she'll. Yeah. She's that that person who plays an acoustic guitar at open mic night. <laughs> anyway, here's Wonderwall. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. And- <laughs> she was exactly that person for a while. Oh, <laughs> uh, so he's gonna like he's gonna like take a quick picture of the guitar Jen gave him and then send it right after like another one of the pictures where Jen is holding that guitar in it and just be like, I have this guitar, she gave me her guitar. I, I mean, it doesn't have the lightning bolt on it, 
but I think I, I assume she added it after these pictures were taken. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, you this is ask her cool. about this. Tell me what she says. I want to know more. Okay, okay, okay. I, it's really late now. I probably should catch up before she goes to sleep. Um, good luck at school. Thanks. <laughs> and she sends you uh, a waving hand emoji. So you, you find yourself, you wake up, it's the middle of the night, but you've had a full night's sleep, so you're definitely not tired anymore. <laughs> so how do you think you're going to spend the, the wee hours of the start of the morning? Well, I think the second Lucia wakes up and kind of like gets aware of her situations, like it's really dark outside what time is it is this even real um you know when you <laughs> wake up from like too deep of a nap yeah yeah and uh she checks the time on her phone kind of groans because like oh, okay fine she, there's no homework that's gonna be done um but you know what there are leftovers from dinner mm -hmm. so i think she's gonna get up as her like tummy starts to grumble um and you know, still doesn't do anything to fix herself up. I think her, like, space buns are just a mess. The, like, curls are sticking out loose. Um, <laughs> and she just, like, heads downstairs to go eat, get her, eat her portion of dinner. Oh, yeah, yeah. That definitely would be set aside for you in your corner of the fridge. Hmm. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, actually, when you, you head to the, the fridge and you, you pull out your, like, container of food, there's a little, like, sticky note on it from your mom that says, hope you feel better soon. Yeah, I think Lucia just kind of smiles to herself and goes into the dining room to uh, eat her dinner. And in the dining room, you actually find that you are not, in fact, the only person who is awake at this odd hour of night. Uh, you see Teo has got a bunch of his schoolwork spread out across the dining room table. You don't know if he's gone to sleep yet or if he's just woken up this early, but there he is. Yeah, there's only one person alive at this time of uh, the evening, and it is definitely my older brother, uh, yeah. Gremlin, that he is. Mm -hmm. Gremlin, victim, <laughs> college student, same thing. Why not um, both, JPEG? <laughs> honestly. Um, yeah, I think I think Lucia kind of like eyes him warily but decides to sit down at the table anyway and I, it's kind of been established I think that they kind of sit near each other but yeah she like slides in very carefully because he's studying and she doesn't want to bother him And you hear uh, your your mom's voice calling from the living room. Actually, like, oh, Angie, Angie, oh, come come on in here. I'm in I'm in the living room. Come come talk to me for a sec. Uh, okay. And then uh, she walks into the living room, like in the "Am I in trouble?" cautious look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you find your your mom. Uh, she reaches for the remote and she pauses the generic crime show that she's watching, and she sort of straightens her hair a bit like she's clearly just been like sitting here uh relaxing for a little while at least as much as she's able to yeah but she seems she seems a little uh excited that you're home actually okay uh hey mom what's up um well i i guess um how was uh how was school honey uh, so she, she has a backpack and she just kind of lets it drop on the ground so she can go and sit down. Like I said, teenager doesn't think about <laughs> putting it away. Yeah. Uh, it was good, I guess. There's a, there's a lot of students that, like, recognize us now from the performance. So sometimes walking down the halls just to get to class is an adventure now. Uh, and you you see her get a grin on her face when you say that. But uh, other than that, it's okay, I guess. That sounds fantastic. Oh, I've just... I, It's been a lot to process since the weekend, but I've been so... 
I've been so excited for you since since you told us and since the show uh, <laughs> to hear that people are are really starting to pay attention to you. That's so exciting. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I didn't think we would get to that point. I just had a goal that I thought it might work, uh, but now it's actually working and it's not everything I expected, but it's, yeah, it is pretty cool. And like my friends were pretty cool too, right? Like we were a unit, you know? Oh yeah, no, your your friends were, were fantastic, but Angie, honey, you were sensational and I have no doubt in my mind that you are absolutely fucking going to just tear up the super idol scene now that you've got this big platform and I just oh I've got so many I've got so many ideas oh you have no idea what kind of ideas and then I'm gonna like grab the guitar and like flipped through my album to those pictures, like one of the pictures where she's holding that guitar as well, and rush down st- down the stairs to um, find Aunt Jen before she heads to bed. Yeah, and you definitely still find her awake, like possibly partly because she was worried about you and was waiting to see when you would wake up, but also because she has a Aww. big stack of papers that she needs to mark, and she has a, a big yeah. oversized cup of like um of espresso keeping her going (laughs) she kind of runs downstairs and like like almost skids to a halt before like it crashes into a wall and just goes aunt jen aunt jen guess what i found out oh hey honey oh what's up oh i'm glad you've got your energy back how are you yeah i we didn't stay we stayed up really late last night so I, I was running on fumes at school. I don't think, I don't think I remember anything that really happened. So I, I might can, need to ask some friends for notes. I can tell. Um, like I, I hope that means you had fun. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And you can like, I don't think he's very good at hiding it, but like he definitely falters at that point. But he quickly like catches himself up again and goes, "Can you teach me how to play?" And he like holds up the guitar. Uh, yeah, and, sh- and she finally like blinks her the bleariness from her eyes and notices that you're holding the guitar. Like, oh, um, yeah, I, I guess w- w- you mean wait right now. Um, I mean, okay, maybe not completely, like not fully teach me how to play right now, but maybe a few chords or something like that. Uh, sh- sure, yeah, I, I, I can still stay up for another another hour or so, maybe. Oh, uh, <laughs> she's used to working uh, uh, enough, like, marking late into the night, so it's not unusual for her to stay up uh, this late, so. Yeah. Uh, but she's happy to take a break from from marking, so she sets down her, her red pen and s- gives a stretch and stands up from her from her desk, and it's like, oh, I guess, like, what do you, what do you want to know? I know you can play a bit already, uh, like, and she, she starts to ask you, like, what chords you know, and pretend that we yeah. know what chords we're talking about. <laughs> And he's gonna be like, I, I know all of those chords, but what were you playing here? And he's gonna show her the picture that um, Alicia sent him, <laughs> and her eyes widen, <laughs> um, and you can you can see her flush a bit. Like, where did you get this? He just taps the side of his nose, <laughs> and then, then she notices the name Alicia in the top of the text. <laughs> message oh, oh, field. Damn, okay. <laughs> so like, oh. It's a different Alicia. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll. Okay. I'll have to have a little talk with my sister. Let's. Hmm. <laughs> why? Why do you want us to know about it though? You look so cool. What the, did you play with all of these bands? Did you play with multiple bands? They don't always <laughs> seem to be the same people. Uh, and and she she runs a hand up through her the top of her hair like uh, well I guess if the cat's out of the bag now um yeah it's it's a thing I used to do a lot when I was in college it was uh, during my education degree it was just something kind of fun that I did on the side I I always liked music so and I it was never like a thing I wanted to do 
professionally, but it was fun to play with people. And yeah, it was, it was just, it was a part of my life. And uh, now it isn't anymore. It, I've, I've kind of moved on from that part of my life, but it's still something that I, I'm glad to see that you're doing. And, uh, and I still like music a lot, obviously. So. So who are these people? And it's going to like point to a few, <laughs> a few of the um, band members that like she's played with and a few of the different bands. Oh God, I can't even remember some of these people nowadays. I used to, m mainly what I would usually do would just be like a, like a session player, basically like helping other groups eat around campus and around like the general like area of that college town, play their shows if they needed a, uh, an extra or guitarist or anything like that. But, um, I, I know that this one, like she points to like, that's, uh, I think that's, they were the crab trees. They were pretty, they were pretty all right. Or like these, these guys, I think was like, um, uh, Sammy and Sloan. Uh, I think that they just used their, their names. Like they were, <laughs> they were kind of a tense couple, I think, but like they, <laughs> um, well, they, they were professional at least. That's, uh, that's much I can say about them. Uh, and she names off a few more other like groups in the yeah. photo. It's like, it's, it's just a, like an array of like basically, uh, college and, uh, young adult bands. <laughs> Do I recognize any of the names? Uh, no, you don't. These are all like very small, okay. like college town acts. Yeah. None of these are okay. like very famous people. Okay. I was wondering if, if if she like has some connection to someone big, I mean, she, she's kept it a secret this whole time. <laughs> Not in these photos that you can see anyway. Okay. That's really cool. I still don't understand why you kept this a secret though, or why you wanted to keep it a secret. I'll be honest, Alicia wasn't. The moment I told Alicia about this guitar you gave me, she was pretty adamant about finding out. So it wasn't going to be a secret for long. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't have underestimated the, the power of brother sister investigation teams she she chuckles um but yeah um i i guess i can't you know what she sits she sits down uh and she sits with the guitar uh in her hands and she she gives it a light strum like i i'll be straight with you Jaden. i actually can't really talk about all of it like there's a there is a reason that i stopped eventually and partly partly it was that I really did need to move on with my life like I was starting to become a student teacher and I, I was that was eating up a lot more of my time and energy and that's where I wanted to focus and I, I just didn't have time anymore but the last thing I was involved in did have some weight as well and Unfortunately, there there's an NDA involved. I can't even tell you about what happened. There's legal consequences if I talk about what happened. Oh, I think Jaden's face definitely like he definitely was excited this whole time, but like that definitely like his face kind of drops like that. Oh, we must have been pretty bad. Um, mm, yeah. Well, it was it was complicated, is what it was. That's mm, I don't know how much I can. Uh, and she's like puzzling like how much she can say without <laughs> being legally liable uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean if it's if it's like a legal thing it's, it's okay I guess you don't have to tell me um. uh, I really do wish I could tell you because I, I really wish I could tell a lot of people um, <sighs> but well you know what if you're if you're looking for for tips I, I can teach you chords I can teach you about like how to like proper guitar technique but um as far as like idle tips i think one of the the most important things i can advise you is you should absolutely read any contracts that you're presented with with a fine tooth comb uh because you never know what someone will try to make you agree to if you're not careful oh uh okay i actually never considered that part of being an idol so yeah, um, it's you're you. you're in high school hmm. now. You don't have to worry about this as much, but that is a big part of being an idol. And if that is where you want your life to go, you are gonna have to prepare at some point to deal with the industry side of things, which is uh, everybody's favorite part of 
all of that. Mm. Oh, um, I'm not. Could you read my contracts when I eventually get them? Is that a thing you can do, or do I have to like oh, hire a lawyer? Absolutely, I will help you read that. Like, I don't know okay. how much how much Oof. legal advice we can afford, but like it. Anyone that I can get help from with, I will absolutely. I don't want you to sign anything unless you are a thousand percent okay with everything that they're asking of you. I just sort of stand in front of the door for longer than is expected, uh, sort of running the mental calculations in my head and and then knock on the door. Yes, you hear from behind the door. It's Violet's Violet. I was told you wanted to talk to me. Oh, yes, Violet, please do come in, dear. And behind the door, you can hear Mary getting up out of whatever chair that she's in. And the door opens. And there... You see, uh, you you have met Mary Rain in person before, but just for the audience's sake, what you see is a very tall woman with long, very full, blonde, wavy hair with shocking green streaks in parts of her hair. Like, she's got kind of like a rock kind of hair aesthetic almost, Uh, but it's in a, a very elegant kind of way as well because she's also wearing a very stylish black dress and little like shawl with sleeves and some very nice gloves and very nice shoes and she's got one of those like (laughs) she's got one of those fancy like uh, cigarette holders the long ones that you see like villains using fantastic (laughs) because that completes the look (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she gives you a very disconcerting smile but she's clearly pleased that you are here in person Thank you so much for stopping by, Violet dear. I was getting concerned when I hadn't seen you for a few days after your very successful show. Yes, uh, of course. I needed some time to recover from how that encounter ended, and I have been working hard with the rest of my group since then. But I'm sorry I have not come to see you again before now. Yes, I can tell based on the results of your show that you have been working very hard with your group. Here, why don't we come inside? And she she ushers you in, puts a hand on your shoulder and closes the door behind you. And her dressing room area is much larger than a normal dressing room, obviously. It's more like a combination dressing room, office, and personal, like, just personal area for her. So it's a very mm-hmm. spacious area, lots of lounge-type couches, there's fancy art on the walls, there's places where she's got a very nice liquor cabinet, television, and personal computer set up and whatnot in here, and a large makeup table as well. So she ushers you over to the couch areas and has you mm-hmm. have a seat there. Yes, I'm very happy to see the group work that you've been doing so far. Although I will say, and she gives you a bit of a sharper look, you know that I was not happy to see that one little incident that nearly brought everything crashing down around you, Violet. I am, of course, speaking of your detransformation. Of course, that's... Something I have been trying to work on, and I think something that you could help with, with your experience. Um, I've been using my powers more in actual combat situations rather than just performing, and I think I need to train on, on using my powers without losing control or losing my hold on them. I would most certainly agree with that, and I'm very pleased to hear that you would like assistance with that, Violet, because, as I've said before, you have a tremendous and awe-inspiring amount of power, and you need to be able to control that far better than you do. You did very admirably in most respects at the show, but a more practiced and controlled idol 
would have been able to maintain their form even when being caught off guard by another attack like that. And, of course, while it was fabulous for drawing attention to you the first time, we certainly do not want another downpour on the regular, let's say. Yes, of course. I certainly want to make headlines, but not for a lack of control. Wow, can I take a powerful blow? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to get it that heavy that that soon, but I think she's no, no. been holding that in for a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll have you roll a powerful blow for sure. Ouch. Yeah, that's a nine. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to give ground. Oh, I, 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 I just, I just don't like. You, you, you just what? You just what, Alan? You, stop stuttering. Start, start standing up for yourself for once. What are you? Uh, just put yourself down in one place for once. I can't, I, I can't watch you so much of the time. Just like being pulled this way and that, and not even being able to stand up for yourself. I just don't want to disappoint people. I know. I know you don't, bud. Just... You... Your... Your needs, your wants are important too, right? Like, you get to tell people to fuck off sometimes. You know that, right? I do it all the time. Um, Alan's just looking down. It just can't really meet Kenzie's eyes right now. Yeah, and she's putting a hand on her forehead. She knows she's going off too much. Like, even... Like, she knows she can fly off the handle and... She doesn't like to do it to you. So she's trying to cool herself off, but like, yeah, <laughs> she's clearly, again, frustrated. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Alan. I, I really shouldn't be lashing out at you like this, but I just, I, I care about you, you know? Like, how long have we been friends? How many years? Since, like, kindergarten. Like, I, uh, I just, I want stuff to go well for you for once. I want you to not like have to be so like anxious about everything all the time i'm trying oh okay i i think that's your problem you're trying too hard all the time just give yourself a break for once oh <sighs> why like missing a meeting and she she pauses there like she like she's caught in a logic loop and then she wasn't expecting to be well like I would I was kind of hoping that it would be on this side, you know, like the thing that you committed to like first of all things, the thing that I thought you cared a ton about, right? Like you care so much about the the fucking bees and the and the dirt and the leaves and whatnot. Like I kind of get into this shit cuz of you like I was kind of hoping this would be a thing we could do together, right? Yeah, but what 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 are we doing here? We're just... We're just taking other people's cans out of the recycling. Out of the paper bin. It's just... What difference does it make? It's it's important because I, I want to hang out with you, okay? Like, God. I... Ugh. I'm sorry, can't I missed you. <sighs> missed you too. Just, like... What's, what's yeah. going on? Like... How important is is all like your what is it like your your fucking homework or your job or like whatever your parents want from you like I get, I know that's that's important stuff but like I don't know like do you need the job does any high schooler need a job your parents make good money like fuck what what else do you do I feel like there's something else going on even like your your time can't all be taken up by by just that right it feels it feels like there's something else going on. Okay, this is this is stupid, and I, if I am going to tell you this, I really don't want you to make fun of me. Okay? She raises an eyebrow, like, okay. I've kind of got a bit hooked on a. I've been gaming. I've got a guild and everything. And at that. She looks like 
You know what? I'll, I'm actually going to have you roll provoke someone because you're you're lying to Kenzie right now and you're trying to get her to accept your lie. And I'm guilty. So you get to roll superior for that. Okay. So. Oh, God. Oops. Yeah, that's a five. Okay. So you 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 give her this spiel about gaming and guilds and like. Yeah, we, we had the raid last night and I crashed them. And she just looks, like, stone-faced at you. Like, are you fucking serious right now? That's the best you can come up with. Like, and and she tosses her arms up and, like, moves away from the, the compost. Like, I, at least if you're gonna fucking lie to me, Alan, come up with something better than, like, I, I, I've become a gamer all of a sudden. Like, no. I'm not buying that. What is going on? You're lying to me. You're hiding something, and now I know it. What are you hiding from me? Oh, God. Are they starting to sh- shut down a little? Oh, no. <laughs> like, they, they do that thing where they kind of shrink, shrink in. Can they please wait? Can, can we... Can, can we talk somewhere else for a moment? Yeah, and she she does catch your, your look like this is important, and... She tries to calm herself down, and she shoots mean looks at the other members who are clearly, like, on looking. And she's like, what what the fuck are you looking at? As she, like, shuffles you off away from the green where the compost and the bee colonies are, over to a more private area near the school building. Hey there everybody, I hope you're enjoying our second Soloists episode so far. It's 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 just going great. It's going great for everybody. I'm, I'm sure you can tell. It's Everybody's happy. Everyone's having a good time. It's, well, some of them really are, but, well, you know. Uh, I also hope you're not getting too sick of my voice yet, considering how NPC heavy these episodes are. Uh, so I'll try and keep this break as quick as possible so you can get back into the episode. First, I want to give you a quick reminder about our Halloween one-shot coming up soon. Uh, That'll be called Cyber Idols the Movie 3 Halloween Crisis. You will understand it when the one-shot comes out, I promise. (laughs) We're going to try and have that ready most likely the day of Halloween, though if editing goes long, it might possibly come out a little bit after depending on how editing goes. It's a really big session and Kathleen has been doing some really special extensive work on that one uh, this month, so we want to make sure we get that right. You can keep an eye on our Twitter, at Super Idols RPG for updates on that, um, and you can also look out for the live video premiere information in your YouTube subscription feed, so thanks for that. And as always, I would like to remind you about all the cool stuff you can get if you become a member of our Patreon! Patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise. One dollar a month or more on that gets you extra audio and before and after session talk, for various episodes, and for $5 a month, you get the uncut, unfancified versions of every episode. And this episode's $5 content in particular is really, really good, because like the last Soloists episode, uh, you will be able to hear all five individual solo scenes for this episode by themselves, uninterrupted. (laughs) That alone, I think, is really cool to hear, because these scenes really are just like they they all played out incredibly well and i almost i almost feel bad cutting them up like this but it, it works better when you're trying to put them all into one episode like this <laughs> but if you do want to hear like the actual like flow of each scene without them being cut up with the other scenes then uh the five dollar a month patrons will be able to hear those and of course those scenes also include some content that had to be cut for time in the final episode this is a really long episode as it is and it was going to be even longer without the cut stuff. Um, Angie and Lucia's scenes especially uh, had some significant chunks that had to be taken out, including some minor setting lore in Angie's scene and a whole little mini scene with Lucia and her mom at breakfast that's very sweet and unfortunately just did not fit with the flow of the full episode. It it breaks my heart to cut that one especially, so I really hope you get to listen to that one. Oh man, It it is always tough figuring out what to cut and what to keep for these episodes, and often the stuff that gets cut is still really great, so if that interests you, definitely consider giving us five dollars to hear all that. (laughs) And thank you to those who already do, of course! If if you're in the five dollar tier, you also get your name shouted out on the podcast on occasion. 
alike as so. We have this episode. Tanner Zed, Ericune, Chris T, Liv C. Hi, Liv. Wolfie, The Joiner, Matthew F, Aurabolt, Icicle Prism, and Rain Crystal. Thank you all so, so much for your support. As always, it means a lot to us, and especially, like I said, because Kathleen is doing so much extra editing work this month, it really helps make sure that Kathleen gets compensated fairly for that. <laughs> and thank you very much to all of you for helping that happen. Last thing before we jump back to the episode, of course, is an ad for one of our network member shows on the Be Gay Roll Dice Network. This time, we have for you Magic Dagger. Um, they are playing D&D with a focus on big best friend energy, thoughtful consideration of inequality and bigotry, and a whole lot of goofy fun times. <laughs> uh, seriously, the, the Magic Dagger folks have been just, like, fantastic to get to know, especially in our chats on the Be Gay Roll Dice Discord, and the care and enthusiasm that they put into what to, they do is just infectious, and I, you will hear that in their ad, you will also hear that in their show, which you should definitely check out. <laughs> uh, I think that's all for now, uh, and I will let you get back to everybody having just the, the absolute best time. Actually, I think after the ad break is back to Lucia's scene for a bit, so it will be kind of a sweet fun time for a little bit, but we'll get back to some of the other scenes later in the episode. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> Need a new gay found family podcast? We're queer-led actual D&D play... G nope. <laughs> <laughs> We're a queer-led actual play D&D podcast of four best friends who are currently playing... Hold on. <laughs> We're a bunch of queers playing D&D for a podcast. We're lifelong friends... We have space travel, <laughs> magic technology, heist, horses, and a really gooey goblin. I'm stealing all of your stuff. I'm just going to say this entire ad. <laughs> we have great bonus content with the first episode of each arc available for free. <laughs> and the entirety of the first arc, the Bone Rattlers. Uh, yeah, each arc... <laughs> is set in a excuse me each art is set in a in universe history podcast about each planet in the planetary system there's more than one we have a bunch of episodes available for binging and wonderful characters to fall in love with and hate <laughs> including some jank horses <laughs> we have multiple arcs out that follow the story of Val a trite <laughs> ten Val the Triton, an interplanetary <laughs> criminal and MLG gamer. Uh, horse rider extraordinaire. Xerxes, a murderous demon that likes to wear dad hats. And sometimes uh, rides a night horse. horse. Patches, a part-time old lady, full-time ooey-gooey cyborg goblin, and her trusty rusty steed, Horus. And Adam, the small boy technomancer, and their journey as they grow and discover uh, the truth to their pasts. I was going to be mad because I didn't do a character voice, and then I was like, no, <laughs> I did. <laughs> Magic, Magic Dagger, Dagger. If, if the, the true, true treasure, treasure isn't friendship, friendship I'm, I'm going to be mad. mad. I'm going to be mad. If treasure true, friendship bad? <laughs> but yeah, she like slides in very carefully because he's studying and she doesn't want to bother him. <laughs> Fair. Although definitely he's going to notice you coming in because like, there's no other activity in the house. So like any movement yeah, or sound. No. <laughs> he looks uh, like mildly surprised, but then he remembers like how early you went to bed and he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so he pulls off his headphones. He's like, oh, hey. Oh, hey, how's it, how's it going, Luce? Um, it's fine. <sighs> yeah, you, <sighs> you went to bed super early. Like, what? Did you get much sleep at the slumber party the other night, I guess. Is that why you're so tired? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we just stayed up really late. Just, you know, hanging out, working on stuff. We watched a lot of TV. Mm, well, I guess I, I should have figured not much sleeping gets done at sleepovers a lot of the time. <laughs> but I'm glad you had fun. Yeah, it was nice. Mm. What you working on? Oh, just the homework of the devil, as usual, as he draws another, like, begrudging line of highlighter across a page. 
Um, I like lean over and squint to see if I understand it. <laughs> Can't at all. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, and something something lymphic system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I just kind of sit back, look at him, and just you know, you should probably get some rest too. Staying up this late isn't good for anybody. It's definitely yeah. not good for your skin. Yeah, you know, as a as a medical student, you'd think I'd know that better than anybody, but <laughs> you'd think the people who run my yeah. program would know that better than anybody is the real thing here. Mm, that's true. It does seem kind of like counterintuitive that they don't take into consideration at all like your own well being and health. Despite being healthcare professionals, I guess. I guess. Th- I guess they might just be preparing us for like how hectic it is for real out there, like being on call and long hours of the night on shift, that kind of thing. But like, oh, that's a lot. Oh, excuse me. No, it's okay. How much work? How much more work do you have? Oh, I think I can probably go mm, maybe another hour or so. Get a few hours sleep. Wake up, go to class for a while, come back, catch a few more hours, then get up and do it all over again. I'm sorry. Mm, don't be. I, I chose this, and it's legit what I want to do. Like, I I really do want to help people. Like, there's lots of people who, like, uh, especially with, like, all the, the power stuff that happens out there, like, that a lot of people need medical care. Yeah, like that girl at my school. The the one who caused the, the video incident, or, like... Well, I mean, yeah, the video incident. And then when Dad and I went to that concert, I mean, nothing bad happened, but, yeah, people could have gotten hurt. Oh, yeah, yeah, you said the barriers almost broke. That's the scary, sis. Like, I'm glad nobody got hurt, but still, that's scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but honestly, it was kind of cool. <laughs> I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. And he reaches over to, like, straighten out some of the, like, loose hairs in your space buns. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think most of the time she would, like, kind of, like, go away and, like, bat at him. But I think she lets him. Um, <laughs> And she just, like, kind of shrugs and just, I mean, I know, like, my stuff isn't as cool or whatever. Like, you want to help people and, you know, destroy diseases or whatever but i don't know i think idol stuff is kind of cool it's its own kind of thing yeah i mean like if i could have like the power to like i don't know instantly heal my patients or like i don't know lift them from one bed to another with like a levitation or something like that or even like i don't know (laughs) Uh, just like it, anything like that would make my job super easy. It must be great to be able to use that not only, like, to do something you love, but to, like, make a bunch of other people happy, too. Yeah, but, like, you would be the lamest musician act ever. I'm sorry, Teo. Like, I just have to be honest with you. Like, like you'd be, lo- <laughs> you'd be lamer than Physicians Unknown. Like, <laughs> you would be so lame. <laughs> And he he gives you like a a laugh at that. <laughs> Me and my ukulele take offense to that. <laughs> oh my god! Not you and this ukulele thing again. <laughs> I can't believe you're a ukulele guy when you're in high school. That is so embarrassing. I'm so glad nobody knows at school that I'm the little sister of the ukulele guy. <laughs> it was the the one instrument that was easy to play and wasn't just like the bongos or the maracas. <laughs> She's just giving him the most disapproving look ever. <laughs> You're right. You should stick to being a doctor. I think it comes easier to you. Uh, unfortunately, it does. <laughs> we have a new member. I didn't tell you about that. We have a new member that joined us a couple of days ago. Um, her name's Lucia. Oh, oh, she, so she joined after seeing, did she join after seeing you perform then? Yeah, yeah, and again, like, he kind of, like, fidgets at remembering that, yeah, she had a few pointers for us, um. Oh, and she catches that you look uncomfortable, like, oh, I hope she's not being too hard on you. 
No, it was it was it was really valid advice. I I don't know. I guess it was just uh, I felt I felt kind of awkward that that was my the first impression I put out there for a new member. Um, she thought I think she thinks I'm angry, like an angry person. Hmm. Uh, and she puts a, a finger to her lips. I I certainly wouldn't say that. Um, I I don't know why she would get that impression, but I I suppose I hadn't seen you that angry before what happened at the show, so maybe that is what gave her that impression. Yeah. Hmm. It kind of like just sits there like idly twiddling her thumbs. Um She was right, I do need to be able to keep my cool. I'm I'm the drummer of the group. I kinda of keep the pacing of everything because she can't mm. Can't let that um get out of my control. Uh, that that is true. You, th- it is true. I I usually wouldn't peg you as someone who has an issue with that. But then again, y- you haven't been in a lot of these stressful group dynamic situations with other idols before. This might bring out emotions in you that you're not used to. So I guess that that might be good advice to keep in mind, especially uh, especially when dealing with um bands and idols and all of that the whole music field is infamous for drama and infighting and just the clashes of personalities so interpersonal dynamics and emotions are always good to to keep an eye on yeah i think i don't know i might be a bit biased and maybe too optimistic but i feel like our group is pretty good with that i don't think we're going to have any infighting or anything like that i've heard a lot of groups break up because of that i think we're gonna stick together for quite a while i hope so i i know that things can be tumultuous for teenagers um so uh but i i trust your judgment of your friends so i i think if you say that that's the case then i think that'll be the case but i do need you to meet them i would like them i feel like you like them a lot yeah well if you're cert- if you're going to have more sleepovers then you're absolutely welcome to use the den for that here Feel free to invite them over anytime. Okay, I'll ask them. Oh, wait, that also reminds me. I don't know if I told you this. Um, we're gonna be going to a training camp, like a super idols training camp. Oh, oh, which which one is it? It's for Camp Grand Star. There there was uh an incident when we were getting ready for the previous gig and involving another group and Elementum and I were able to return some property that belonged to the Snapdragons, so they offered to send the whole group to the camp, which I think will be very helpful in learning to control my my power. And she does look very pleased to hear this. Uh, I think she was fearing that she might hear the name of some, like, rinky dink like day camp or whatever because there are a bunch mm-hmm. of those that try to like make a quick buck off of young idols in the city fantasy rock star weekend camp yeah <laughs> basically yes <laughs> yeah no she so she was uh, concerned that it might be like some camp trying to like prey on you uh but camp grand star carries a lot of like clout and respectability so she's much happier to hear that name Oh, Grand Star, that is most exciting. I had not thought about that myself since it is coming up so quickly. I I wasn't sure that there would be enough time to plan for that. But if you already have an inn to participate, I would most certainly agree that sending you there for the weekend would be most beneficial and would not, well, it would delay what I have in mind for you, but it certainly would not detract from it. And what is it that you had in mind for me instead? And she actually looks a little bit more, like, not vulnerable that I, is the word that I'm looking for, but a little less guarded, I suppose, than she usually does. Uh, as she kind of actually gives, like, a little look to the, the left and the right to make sure that, like, there's nobody, like, peering in, like, a window or anything like that. Or I think she looks up to, like, there's a, a camera up in the top of the room as well, and she checks and the there's no, like, red blinking light, so she's clearly making sure that she's remembered to disable that beforehand. Well, 
I suppose before I explain, there is something that you should know about me, Violet. And there's a reason that I place so much value on power on stage. And that is that not all of the power that I display on stage is mine alone. And she gets up off the couch and she heads over to her desk and picks up a glossy photo and brings it over to you. And it is a photo of herself. She looks slightly younger in this picture. She looks slightly less elegant, more like a standard pop punk band wear that has a lot of greens and blacks. And she has a t-shirt with a design of a glowing fiery heart on it. And she's standing with two other people, a man and a woman it looks like. The woman is white and has kind of shocking orange hair done up in a big poofy top ponytail. And she has a very bright yellow rocker outfit that's designed around lightning bolts. And the man is a darker skinned man that's wearing a loose open front top with a blue gradient and stylistically ripped jeans. And he has very shaggy black hair and a beard and he looks very handsome. And she shows you this picture and says, I have a few associates who work with me who provide our shows with a little extra flair, you might say. And not many people are aware of this because it would harm the Mary Rain brand, let's say. Uh, I think during this, Valerie is sort of stock still, like, has, has realized, oh, this is something really important and, like, isn't sure what the right expression to show here is, so she's just trying to look like, not give away her reaction, uh, which is kind of surprise at this. As you know, I have the ability to grant others powers, but that's a bit difficult to make look impressive on stage, now isn't it? I needed something else that could make me look more impressive to an audience. And my very good friends Abigail and Rayanne here are more than happy to help me project this image. They are some of the most practiced superpowered people that I know of, and I feel they would be more than qualified to make your powers just as impressive and, more importantly, well controlled. I see that Sounds like a fantastic opportunity for me. Thank you. Yes, so I'm setting things up to get you into training sessions with Abby and Ray as soon as possible. I suppose now I will have to ask Grace to shift things around a little bit more. I know I'm asking a lot of them, but I'm sure they'll be happy to oblige me. They always are. And she gives a little smile to herself. But yes, let's say the week after this, we can start your training sessions with Abby and Ray. And we should be able to get those powers of yours in check and over the top at the same time. In quick order, I should think. Of course, I, I realize this must be a big deal for you to trust me with this um, information and with this training. And I, I appreciate the trust that you're showing in me. I will say it is partially trust because you have shown yourself to be mostly trustworthy from what I've seen at least in terms of your willingness to follow direction. But also, remember, Violet, your contract is also very ironclad, and you know that if any of this information is to leak out to the public in any form, including to your groupmates, there will be severe consequences for you. So that also gives me a little bit of added insurance so I do not have to rely solely on trust. Of course. Of, of course, that is the sort of um, control of the situation that I want to learn and take into my own career. I should hope so. I do, I do believe in you, Violet. I do believe that you will be one of Rain Shadow's most impressive idols as long as you have the proper training. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing you reach those heights. Uh, so, so am I. And 
I'm, I'm sure that I will continue to make you proud. So, I have been talking with, um, somebody that I used to know back in the day. Just somebody at a uh, graphic design firm who owed me a, a favor or two, let's say. Um, and I've been thinking something that might get your name out there even more would be some proper logos and merchandising. What? <laughs> and like her face totally changes. Like this is not expecting. <laughs> this is not how she's expecting the conversation to go. Oh, like, yeah, but in so a happy I'm... way where she's like excited to see the the merch. Anyway, so she goes to this uh, knitting basket and she pulls aside some like stray balls of yarn that she's been hiding something underneath with um and she pulls out well there's two things she's gonna pull out first she pulls out a a, a file folder um and she she passes it over to you and when you open okay. it it looks like a set of mock-ups of different possible logos for rhythmics in a bunch of different graphical styles which we we won't really <laughs> Define specifically here so that we can go over them as a group and maybe just define what those styles are once we're with the group. Um, but yeah, there's just a bunch yeah. of different options of rough designs for a logo um, in this file folder uh, that you can peruse and <laughs> look over. Oh my god, mom! This is so fucking cool. Right? This, like, I don't know about, I don't know how fucking graphic design works, but, like, they do their job and it looks pretty fucking good to me. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Yeah, it looks fucking rad, mom. <laughs> yeah. She taught her the word rad. <laughs> oh, absolutely. She grew up in, uh, Margaret, Maggie, whatever her name is, um, <laughs> grew up in, like, the... The high-powered business 80s, so of course she would know the word yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so she gives you that, and she's like, I, I don't know, I have some favorites in there for sure, but definitely, like, show them to your friends and, like, pick out one you like, uh, and I'll, I'll do what I can to, like, start managing, like, whatever funds we have to maybe, like, get, like, an initial print run going, and oh, it, oh it's gonna be so, so, so great. Oh my god, mom, thank you. This is so cool. They're gonna love it. I hope so. And I, I hope that I I hope that you love it. Like I and she she looks a little like slightly pained. Like, I know that things haven't been like great between all of us for a for the last well, how you know how long. Um and I felt I felt kind of, well, more than kind of fucking bad that, like, you you didn't feel like you could trust us enough to tell us about what's been going on for you. And I guess the show was kind of a wake-up call in that regard for me. So I, I felt like I, I wanted to really show you kind of what what I could still do for you, honey. Oh, Thanks, mom. And the others, they're gonna, they're gonna love it. They're gonna totally fucking love it. Oh my god, you, you, they, they had better because <laughs> the, <laughs> this guy is uh, on the hook for what would have been a really expensive job. But I, that, that's not the only thing that he got ready for me. This place also does um, custom clothing mock-ups, and she reaches into the basket one more time, <laughs> and she pulls out. A new bomber jacket. And when she, she turns it around for you, you see the you see Bane Raven embroidered on the back in a really, really fancy font with a, a really cool crest with black and gold wings outstretched across the back. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking I god. Love right? it. And she like and she falls like, her snatches. face as she like passes yeah. it over to you. Like not even passes, yes. like kind of like throws it at you, like, this is yeah. the coolest fucking thing, right? Yeah, and uh she's standing up and she's trying it on and she's doing poses. How's it look? How's it look? Absolutely perfect. Do you want me to take pictures? Uh yes. And then she pulls <laughs> out her phone to get it to the camera app so that she can 
There's like that one room that she always does like selfies in front of with the free wall with all the good window lighting. So they <laughs> yeah. just go there <laughs> to do yeah. it. And she she like fumbles with your phone a bit because she hasn't used it very much. Uh, but eventually she gets it working and she takes a few good like full body yeah. photos of you in the jacket. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I'm totally going to post pictures of these later. Thank you so much, Mom. This is so cool. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you like it, honey. I, I really hoped it would be like a style that you that you liked. Like, <laughs> I had to guess a little bit, but I think I remembered I'm, enough of your tastes from back in the day. I'm going to wear it like all the time. I hope so. I can't wait to see your first show in this. I know that everybody's going to absolutely fucking love it. Yes. Ah! And she does like a little dance. Yeah, I think she does that with you. She like does that thing where she like grabs the sides of your arms and you like do a little jumpy dance in, in a circle yeah. together. <laughs> yeah, and it's been a while since they've actually done this together. So, and yeah. I think Angie feels good about it. I think you used to do it a lot more for sure back when like mm -hmm. you were younger and you were in like dance programs and you would get super fired up about performances just like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is something that you've missed, for sure. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mom. Oh, no, don't even mention it. I want to do whatever I can do to help you and your friends, because, like, if you're going for for something like SingStar or anything like that, I think you can do whatever you want to do, honey. I think you're you're going to absolutely fucking crush whatever goal that you go for. And you could even like be on a path right back to starve you within like, I don't know, like a year, I feel like, if you keep on the path that you're going right now. Uh, you know, I kind of like Fort McNally. Oh, really? Um, And she looks surprised at that. Like, I mean, I know. I, I know that's what the best that we could find for you that was, well, that didn't cost any money. Um, But I I guess I'm glad that it's better than I thought it was. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm at home with, with the team I have, you know? Like, oh. I'm like the president of the Idol Club here. Oh, and she's very happy to hear that. Well, that's what I like to hear. Like, <laughs> no matter where you are, I like to hear you climbing the ladder. Yeah, yeah. Break the glass ceiling just like you taught me. Exactly. <laughs> she, like... She flexes a bit like she used to wear like again, like she used to wear those like 80s style, like big shoulder pad like suits all the yeah. time. And you can imagine like she's not wearing one now, but you can imagine what it would look like if she were right now. Totally. One of those like really awkward power suits, you yeah, know, yeah, from yeah. the 80s. <laughs> it just looks yeah. more like a V. <laughs> she still has like her hair is kind of messy because she has like that big like curly hair that she used to do in the, the like big 80s styles back in the day. <laughs> yeah so um i guess i had that means i have permission to go to a training camp this weekend no what which others. which camp um and she hands uh she's like oh and then she grabs her backpack and she pulls out a pamphlet um it's not as smooth as when she first got it there's like a few <laughs> a few wrinkles yeah. and she's like here here look and she, again, lights up seeing this. Oh, my. This is fantastic. I don't know. Talking yeah, about SingStar, this is the way to make it at SingStar. And are, are you sure we can afford this, though? This camp is really expensive. Uh, the Snapdragons are going to foot the bill for this for us. Oh, is that a, a group, I guess? Then, Like, did is that someone you're working with? I don't really know them that well, but I think my friends helped them out to get some stuff back. So this is their way of repaying us for helping them out. And it's super cool of them to give us this opportunity since we have, like, no money. <laughs> well, shit. Yeah, if, if you don't have to pay for it, then that's even better. God, yeah, go yeah. for it. Yes. <laughs> She's I guess, like little... when, is, when is this? She looks at the dates like this this weekend. We, uh, wow, that's pretty soon, but. The sooner the better, sure. Yeah, yeah. Singstar's coming fast and we need to be ready. She like punches the palm of her hand resolutely. Yeah, like the qualifiers start like what, next month? Yeah, yeah. And then um we're gonna do some training with Kyle and 
Um, we're going to do some dance battles and stuff like that and some other training. And I think uh, her her expression does fall a little bit when you mention Kyle, because I think she doesn't fully know what goes on uh, with Kyle. But she knows that uh, she he's from a part of town that she's not a fan of um, and she doesn't right. like you going out there late at night, but <laughs> she can't do much to control you. Yeah. Um, Mom, I told you before. Well, um, I'm actually super strong and more than capable of like punching whoever tries to attack me. So that's I've never had a problem. <laughs> well, you got As me you there. Saw. Shit. <laughs> but really, he's he's really cool, and he's like helped me with you know my temper and stuff. <sighs> well, I guess I I gotta hand it to him for that. I guess I get I guess I should trust my daughter's taste in friends a little more but you know how it is with parents worrying about what boys their girls are seeing oh it's not like that mom ew it's just kyle well even so you never know what's on boys minds sometimes i, I think it's just dance and surfing she looks like slightly confused to be fair part. the one time he was over here he was wearing like well <laughs> Probably like a big bucket hat and like some really <laughs> baggy clothes, and she's like, "Well, I get that you checks know, out. You're probably <laughs> that checks out." You're right. You should stick to being a doctor. I think it comes easier to you. Uh, unfortunately, it does. <laughs> yeah, well, you're smarter, whatever, I guess. <laughs> well, so are you, Squirt. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I don't know. I'm not as smart as you. You're smart in your own way. Like, I'm pr I'm plenty book smart, but you know me. I'm kind of kind of behind in other ways. You, you remember when I was going out with, like, like with Dom last year, and you would know this person. This was um, Teo's former boyfriend that he had last year, <laughs> who was. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember? You remember him? Like we? Like he was nice. He was fun, but um, I j I just didn't know how to keep up with him. He was a lot, and you know I'm I'm not really very <laughs> energetic or uh, funny or I don't know. <laughs> I felt like I disappointed him. Well, you're not a total disappointment. Um, <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement. <laughs> you're not. And it's not your fault that I sucked up all the funny genes in the family. Somebody had to. It had to be me. Mm, um, you know, it's true. Can confirm. That's how <laughs> that works. But, like, seriously, Dale, you're gonna... Like, forget Dom. Dom sucked, honestly. Can I be honest with you? I didn't like Dom. He wasn't right for you. Uh, he was real clingy. That was, like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, you're too independent. Like, you, first of all, you're kind of an introvert, so that was not going to work to begin with. You need somebody who can, like, either exist in a space with you and just be in that space, or, like, is cool with, like, coming in and out and you two, like meeting in the middle when it's right you know uh, we're I gonna find you somebody i, I should so. play matchmaker oh god mm. I, just, I don't know if i should be threatened or not <laughs> <laughs> i think lucia like leans into her brother's face and is like looking him over calculating i bet i could make you a good dating profile i bet i could knock this out of the park <laughs> we'll see we'll see <laughs> <laughs> and he makes a few you like stray it. marks in his book. You're not even sure if it, if they're if he's actually writing anything or just pretending to. You want me to? <laughs> you know I'm right. Oh, it would be nice to go out with someone again. It would be nice to do anything mm. again. Like <laughs> like hanging out, doing like homework and stuff with Delia is nice and all, but like I so rarely see anyone, but like everyone here and like the few people in my class that I know. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it can be hard. I feel like I've been hanging out with, like, only the same couple of people recently. I haven't seen my, like, friends in a minute. So I get that. Is Delia okay, by the way? Mm, I wouldn't say okay. She does seem like she's trying to be more 
proactive, though, I guess. So that's better, in a way. It's better than her sulking, I guess, at least. I mean, it must be hard, either way, to kind of put on a brave face. Yeah, like, seriously, especially for, like, her mom. Like, I've I've met her mom. She's a w- lovely woman. She's worried sick right now. I don't even know. I wouldn't be, be able to imagine that feeling. Hmm. He just disappeared one day, right? Yeah, like, from what I can tell, I think they, they've got, like, the police are looking into this now at this point, although uh, he gives, like, a, a sour look. They're not looking that hard, because, like, her, um, him, like, her brother and whatever the other girl, the stone girl was, they, they think they're bad kids, so of course they're not gonna look that hard, I think. But, Anne. anyway. Her yeah. name was, um, her name was Anne. Oh, oh, so you, you've heard more about her then? Well, um, so I joined the idol club at school. Oh, right. Oh, I can't remember and how much you told your siblings about this. Uh, this is the first time that she is telling any of her siblings. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't even think Ren knows. Oh. Because when, yeah, because when she did her transformation, she made sure that Ren wasn't around. Right, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay, none of so- the siblings, as far as I know, Lucia likes to dance in her room, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so surprise tail face coming right up then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I, I joined the idol club um at school, and apparently she was in it. Oh, real? Hey, whoa! Hey, c- congratulations! That's that's big. Like, hey, that's cool. But I, I guess not for um, whoever Anne is. Um, I, I guess. I'm, I, sure, tell me more. I, he, he's clearly like caught between two reactions right now. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the other club members were telling me about it because they were kind of dancing around it. Apparently she doesn't have like a good family life. Parents are kind of suck. So... They didn't even that line that lines up. I've heard that um her parents aren't really cooperating that well with the investigation, like like it's an obligation or something almost. Yeah, like they don't care, which I don't know. Um so they're worried about her, but I mean, you know. Mm. From what I know, like here's he, he tries to remember like what Delia told him about the details. Uh it sounds like he basically like they both basically seem to just like disappear into thin air almost like she went missing from like the neon district or something like that i think and he w- uh, was in like you know where the, you know where the alley store is like that kind of like strip mall type mm-hmm. area where there's a bunch of like little little mom and pop stores mhm uh, apparently like he was on his way there to get like pop and snacks and stuff and they People saw him enter there, but nobody saw him, like, after he left that area. So, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and Lucia's kind of, like, filing that in the back of her mind for later. And here's the here's the thing. I, I, I said that she was starting to be more proactive. Like, because the cops aren't looking into this that deep, so... She told me she ended up going out to do some looking around that area herself. And she checked around the area kind of between their house and the alley store for a while until she found, like, an alley that Drew likely would have used as a shortcut on his way home. And you know what she found in that alley was a full liter container of Orange Fanta. Um, which is his favorite pop, and just kind of, like, rolled behind a dumpster like it had just, like, dropped there. So it's almost like he just got plucked out of there. Weird. So, like, some people really are just snatching people up. Yeah, it's it's scary to think about. Like, I I don't know if I've heard much about it happening to anyone else, but two people, like, in the same kind of living in the same area, it's... Yeah, it's scary. Like, I don't want that to happen to you. You you be careful out there, you know? Like, I know you can handle yourself, but 
still, you never know, they could handle themselves too, from the sound of it. Only if you promise to be careful. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I guess I could probably start that by going to bed at a reasonable hour one of these years. <laughs> <laughs> you could, but you're not going to. Mm. If you have a an all expenses paid trip to Camp Grandstar, that's a fantastic opportunity. Is when that's when is that? I think it's, I believe it's this weekend. I'm probably should have told you a bit earlier. I I think we only really agreed on it today. Okay, so I I I suppose I can help you prepare for that for sure. Like that's coming up right away. But like I'm pretty sure we have like some camping like gear that I can send you with, and like uh, again I. I guess this is probably a good opportunity to, well, if we're going to teach you more guitar stuff, it would be good to <laughs> to have that going in um, and to teach you more about um, dealing with other idols is also probably good um, if they're going to be a bunch yeah. of hot up and coming idols going to this camp with you. I mean, I'm hoping I can make a few friends there, but I, I definitely would like some help. If any of them are like the band we played against, Sagittaria. I don't know if it'd be as easy to make friends with them, mm -hmm. but I will try and I would like any advice you can give. Yeah, d definitely be wary. Because again, if this is an expensive camp, there probably are going to be a lot of like fairly privileged kids there. And certainly no, wherever you go with idols, there are going to be hot-headed personalities who, um, who are very fame-seeking. So uh, definitely... You have to watch your steps sometimes when, when dealing with those types. Okay. So try and make friends, but be cautious about it. Yeah. Basically just like keep an eye on like the vibe that people give you. If it seems like they're going to be like some kind of like a, like a diva or like someone who is clearly like wanting the spotlight more than others, sometimes it's best to just let them have it. It's, it's not worth the drama trying to like, uh, upstage them or even share the stage with them okay okay um okay that's good i don't think i'm much of an upstager anyway i like to stay behind and just help my friends rather than be in the spotlight mm -hmm. um okay thank you um i mean can you i know we went off topic like almost immediately <laughs> but could you show me some chords as well because i don't know how much we're gonna learn musically there i know we're definitely gonna practice for powers though Mm. But I do think I need some help with actually learning how to play this guitar. Yeah, well, for sure. Yeah, well, I I guess if you are going to focus more on your powers w while you're there, here's one one guitar related tip that I can teach you before we get into the the actual oh. music stuff. Um, and she takes the guitar in her hands and she actually uh raises it above her head, like kind of in front of her face, and she says, "Um, uh, if you're in a dangerous." power situation your guitar is more than an instrument it can also be a shield guitars can be replaced your body can't so even if this guitar gets in the way of something i would rather this guitar be the thing that gets damaged rather than you and i am unfortunately speaking from experience as someone who doesn't have powers who has performed with people who do Sometimes it's necessary to do whatever you can to protect yourself. I think once she says that, it kind of like dawns on him, like, wait, she's performed uh, without powers <laughs> with people who have. But he, like, I think like, it literally clicks with him in that moment and goes, wait, 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 wait. How many, how many times have you had to perform against someone who does have powers or with someone who does have powers? Um, a decent amount. Definitely less early on, because the whole super idol thing wasn't as widespread yet. Um, but certainly more than a few times. And, uh, well, she taps her, her nose uh, to, to signal that the last thing that, that she can't talk about may or may not have yeah. involved that as well. I think he kind of like nods silently and like you kind of seem like just look around at him <laughs> as if someone <laughs> might be listening and be like, okay, just make sure no one's around. Okay, cool. <laughs> kind of thing um and just like immediately skims over that topic because he knows that she can't talk too much about it yeah <laughs> okay so um if i need to use the guitar to protect myself 
I don't really want. Okay, I'll I'll do that, but I'll try also try my best not to get in those situations. Yeah, and I, I really know that like, you've got your own really powers like to protect yourself too. So maybe you're better equipped than me. But I just want to, if like if you're in a spot and you can't bring anything up quick enough, sometimes what you've got in front of you, you've got to improvise. You got to be on your toes. Okay, be on my toes, and you can like you take like a mental note that be on my toes. Use the guitar if need be as protection. Yep. No, okay. Know where your emergency exits and muster points are at any venue. Brush up on your first aid, your CPR, all of that. Just general safety stuff. I know it's boring, oh. but it's necessary. I didn't, I didn't think about any of those. Okay. I should have talked to you about this way earlier. Um, okay. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd tell, uh, told, uh, told you soon, but uh, sooner. But yeah, no, it's, it, it's good stuff to know, even if you do have like your enhanced power or durability or whatever you have. Okay, I probably need to talk to someone about CPR because I don't know much. I think we learned a little in, in class, but... Oh, I'm sure we could sign you up for basic CPR training sometime, for sure. Please, that would be mm. really useful, actually. Yeah. And she she makes a, a... She goes to grab her, her pen and makes a quick note to, like, uh, look into where she can sign you up for that sometime. I think he kind of, like, as he... As he's kind of, like, watching her um, write this down real quick, he kind of, like, his energy doesn't drop but like it definitely changes and he's kind of like um i know i've asked i've asked this before but you watch our performance and um and i, I guess he played with a lot of different bands as well am i how can i help the group like boost them lift their spirits i feel like we've hit a few bumps and we're back we're back up on a, like uphill i guess we're, but I'm never entirely sure how to actually help. And she gives you a, a warm smile at that. That's the part I think you're already doing fantastically. You always, like, just from being yourself, have such tremendous power. Even even before you got your powers, you always had the power to warm up an entire room just with your presence. And I think that's one of the strongest things that you have um, that you can help people with is just just keeping people emotionally like level and motivated and happy and I think as long as you're paying attention to your own emotions too I think uh, and taking care of yourself because you can't take care of others without taking care of yourself then I think you'll be just fine kind of like silently nods and then okay look after myself and then I can look after others and just be myself um Thank you. Of course. And I'm, I'm sure that I will continue to make you proud. I should hope so. I suppose one more thing before we finish up, Violet. I want to hear it from you directly. When you see yourself on stage, when you see in your mind's eye the successful, famous, powerful version of yourself. What do you see? I see myself standing at the top of the charts. I see people lining up for my concerts and my albums, and um, I, I just want to be the best and make sure that no one can stop me, that no one is standing above me or standing in my way. Yes, that's that's all well and good. The mechanics of it, the popularity, the being on the charts. That, that's what you said about being on top is more that feeling that I'm drilling at here. I want you to think about how that feels and what that actually looks like for you. If you are imagining yourself on top of the world, on top of this tower above people, how does that feel and will you chase that or will you falter? I've already committed to this path and I've agreed to work hard and make sacrifices and I'm prepared to make them because that's the only place that I know this path can lead is to the top and I'm going to keep pursuing that. I'm going to make sure I reach the top. 
Uh, and I, I think there, there's a, a shift during this part of the conversation where Violet was very stuttering before and and sort of trying to be be polite and even avoid eye contact. And, and while talking about reaching the, the top of this path and making sure that nobody is standing in her way, she's she's started to like look and speak directly at Mary with purpose. And she she grins at you as she notices this this shift in your mannerisms and your speech, and she gives you a nod of approval. That is exactly what I was hoping to hear. Chase that feeling of not letting anyone stand in your way, of having all the respect and power that you could ever want, and still gaining more all the time. That's what led me to gain all the success that I have today, and that's what I want for you as well. And uh, this is, of course, one of Mary's infamous label shifts happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. she wants to... Right now, she she's talking less about your power specifically and more about your attitude, so I think she's going to be trying to raise your superior and lower your mundane. Uh, I'm going to accept that. As she, like, shuffles you off away from the green where the compost and the bee colonies are over to a more private area near the school building. <sighs> okay. We'll, we'll keep it quiet. This is clearly something sensitive. I'm sorry. Again, I, I can't. I, you know how I am no, sometimes. No, 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 no. I, I should I, I should have. I, I, you deserve the truth, but it's not my truth. I'm something is going on and it's not a bad thing per se, but someone needs my help and they can talk about it and I I can't it's not my secret to tell. That she seems a little bit more understanding of. Like I don't I th I think maybe she thought that there was some other like activity that you were involved in because your schedule seemed to suspiciously <laughs> line up with not being at the club at certain times, but uh, I think she would more likely buy that there is, like, some interpersonal thing going on with you be because she knows, like, how easy it is for emotional stuff to be difficult for you. So she bites her lip a bit and and she nods at that. I th I, I see. I'm... I'm trying to be there for someone and, uh, and at the same time, this... I know how you feel because I just found out that this person hasn't told me everything. That they've been they've been keeping some pretty big stuff from me, and I I don't know what to think because they haven't just kept it from me, but from other friends of theirs. And I would I would like to confront them, but uh, I that's not what I was expecting. But you know, I think that makes a lot of sense. That it's not a easy situation to be in. I uh, I I feel like and she she laughs a little bit. I'd be I, maybe I'm not the one to to ask for advice on on this cuz uh you know how I am with confrontation. I'm not shy about it and maybe maybe you shouldn't be either. I I kind of feel like you again like I I said before you deserve to be able to stand up for yourself and if this this person's been keeping something from you like even if they're hurting like, you get to say that you're hurting, too, from whatever they're doing to you. I want to. Like, I want to get angry because I... I know how you feel. I Like, someone's been keeping something from you. Like, they've... Like, they could have helped and they didn't. And you don't know why. Oh. And, she, and the, she's like, oh, fuck that. Like... Were they supposed to help you with like a, like a project or something or like something like at home or something like that or like oh that just makes my blood boil she, like when oh, someone is she, like supposed to do is like supposed to help you with something and they won't this person said that they were doing everything they could to help but then it turned out they could have done a lot more 
and I don't know how to feel about it. Have you been able to ask them, like, why they didn't yet? Like, if they could have done a lot more and didn't, that sounds like a big fuck them moment, honestly. Yeah, I... Especially because, like, they... When I found out, it was like they didn't even care about me finding out. It just, like, was no big deal, like... And I I was hoping to (laughs) confront them today, but guess who skipped school? What the fuck? Oh, God, I'm... I'm no, seriously, I'm fuck them, much. then. Whoever they are, like, you get to get angry at them. Like, whatever the fuck is going on for them, if they're, like, brushing it off like it's no big deal, then fuck them. Like, seriously, just tell them, like, tell them to fuck off. And tell them, like, this is, like, serious shit. And if they're not going to take this seriously, then, like, they can fucking get lost. And then moss it over for, like, a second, and then they straighten up a little, and... You know what, Kenzie? I think you're right. You know I am. And and she she reaches over to like tussle your hair a bit. Like kind of in a rough like playhousing way. Yeah, yeah tussle right back. <laughs> and and she, she, she likes this. You used, you both used to like rough house a little bit back in your your childhoods, I think. You don't do that much nowadays. <laughs> so this is familiar territory. And she gives you a little bit of a play shove back like <laughs> Come on, like <laughs> I know I've I know you don't like to show it, but I know you can you can fight better than you show most people. I know you can fight back against whoever this loser is. I'm gonna do it. I'm Hell yeah! I'm sick and tired. You should be sick and tired. I like seeing like you fired up like this. Like tell whoever this is that like you're not gonna take their bullshit and like if they're not gonna be real with you, then fucking Bye! Later! Hell yes! Okay, I'm gonna tell you something, but you have to promise not to get mad. Mm -hmm. And she raises an eyebrow skeptically again. So... Me and my friends might have committed a crime. We didn't get caught. We didn't get caught. <laughs> and she looks relieved at that. Like, <laughs> she doesn't look mad that you committed a crime. She looks relieved that you didn't get caught. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so first step's right, so she kind of relaxes at that, too. <laughs> and uh, she basically just says, well, okay, let me start from the beginning. And then she's going to she's gonna pull out her spreadsheet and, like, there's another board that has, like, red lines <laughs> on it. Her virtual, like, like, half murder board. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> yeah. So she's, and she's just going to explain everything. Like, um. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that she thinks about that's going on with Crimson Signal. I think where Angie's coming from is she definitely feels a bit in over her head. And, um,. I think she knows, too, that her mom's more pissed they got caught than the actual embezzlement part. Yeah. (laughs) So she thinks she's kind of, like, hoping that she won't come down on her too hard. But, uh, yeah, yeah, mostly she... As far as, like, Maggie's concerned, like, she's not concerned about the fact that she committed a crime. What she was doing was trying to get the, the absolute best for her kids and her family that she could. And that was the easiest way that she saw to do that. And she's like, I was doing what I thought was right and stealing from rich people to fund our lifestyle. And Yeah, that kind and of to thing. even to a certain degree, she didn't even really care if it was right or wrong. She just cares that much about supporting you and Freddie. Yeah, yeah. So for Angie... I think she understands that a lot more, especially after recently when she's been doing crimes because it's like, well, I did break the law, but we're trying to find our friend and rescue them and that kind of thing and see what's going on. Are you sure you don't want me to call the cops on this? Because like, this seems like something like you're you may you may be like super strong you can punch through a wall but this is like a lot even for you it sounds like after what happened that like you it almost, is you We're... almost did get caught fuck i know we almost did we almost did and uh we weren't prepared for that for that facility but they 
they had anti-magic bracelets, so they were specifically worried about idols getting in there. And I I can't explain the feeling I have, but I feel like they have Anne, and I feel like this guy has avoided the law from all this time, and then I pull up, like, my little idol doc I have of, uh, of Mr. Cervantes. It's like every time he just evades the law somehow. So who the fuck does this guy know? Ugh. And she rolls her eyes big time. <laughs> God, let you don't even know the fucking half of it. Like, <laughs> have I ever told oh my- you, like, have I ever told you uh, just how how many uh, times that we've had to deal with Mr. Cervantes? No. And then uh, I think they're back to sitting on the couch again. So she like leans in like she's ready for the tea. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, so just to give a little bit of background that like Angie would know, but the audience doesn't like so that we don't have to have Angie's mom going like, as you know, daughter, like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so basically what what uh, what your parents, Reggie and Maggie, both did back in the day was they worked for a big financial consulting firm that worked with a lot of high-profile businesses in and around Cadence. And the the size of the firm was a big part of what helped them not get caught in their embezzling for so long, because they were able to hide a lot of their siphoning among a sea of a bunch of other stuff that was going on and manipulating the accounts and books and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And because this firm worked with a lot of different businesses, they had a few different opportunities to work with Mr. Cervantes. So we'll probably pick up the conversation here. So, Mr. Cervantes, Clayton, um, he worked with us a few different times. Um, He had a couple of different businesses that were all uh, very successful at the time. So he was considered a very high profile client that we were supposed to aim to please. (laughs) And the Whenever his businesses ended up falling through in the end, there I get I guess it sounds like you know, like there was no hard evidence of wrongdoing that ever seemed to touch him specifically. And regardless, he he always had so much fucking money to throw around. So that was all our firm cared about. So we just kept letting him. Yeah. Like, um, where does he even get all that money? I don't know. There there must be some kind of it's like an Elon Musk emerald mine type thing going on there. He always seemed to have money regardless of whatever he was involved in. Mhm. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, your dad worked most closely with him when he was uh, in charge of a company called uh CC Tech, uh, CC Tech Engineering, I think it was. Um he worked a lot with with CC Tech's CFO for financial planning and reporting and stuff. But the bottom line is there were a lot of business luncheons and dinners and meetings and whatnot that your dad and often I had to go to that Mr. Cervantes was also at. She's oh, God. She's got a very, like, strained grin, like, oh, I'm going to fucking kill him kind of grin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Angie is just, like, cringing in sympathy because... As mom knows now, she just talked to him for all like ten minutes, and it was the worst. <laughs> so, so you you know you know. <laughs> um, it's like he just knows he's untouchable. You know, it's so infuriating, isn't it? Yeah. Did you know when I was pregnant with Freddie? Do you know how many months I had to go with fat jokes? across the dinner table with him it was Uh, i just wanted to tear him apart god that's so gross Ugh. just i'm sorry that you have to deal with him again just i really hope i really hope you just bring this guy fucking down for once like i don't know if i guess fine if you don't want to get the cops involved whatever but like i'll do what i can to help you because fuck this guy he needs to go down already yeah he is totally the worst and who knows what he's doing to Anne? and it fucking sucks that i don't know where she is and we don't know what to do about it yeah like i guess if they're expecting super idols to be the only ones who can take them then (laughs) 
Some super idols would better take them, it sounds like. And she punches her, the palm of her hand the way that you Fuck often do. yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. And who knows? <sighs> maybe, like, maybe if you go to Grand Star, you'll make some more, like, super idol connections. Maybe you can go in there with more backup next time. I don't know how this works, but he, it sounds like you need, like, an army to take this place on, almost, it seems like. Maybe. Anyway, uh, yeah, I hey, Idol Club, that's, <laughs> to bring that back around to something a little lighter, uh, hey, how's that been? What made you decide to, to join, like, a team all of a sudden? Well, um, okay, so, remember how I told you I, like, dragged Dad to a show? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, that show was for the group, the Idol Club group at my school, they're called Rhythmics. Um, and they're kind of just like a blend and fusion of like all these different styles. They're really, really cool. They have two dancers, a singer, and a musician. Um, so I guess they're kind of like a band, but they're also an idol group. Eh, who cares? But yeah, I saw them and I was like really, really, really impressed. Believe me, they need work, but I think it's kind of cool. And I got to join. I don't have, like, abilities yet or anything, but, um, you know, I joined. Yeah, well, well you never know, because, like, people, like, gain powers all the time just from, like, working on music stuff. Who knows? Like, you could get some, like, any day now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, you, you let me know if you, if you do. That'd be, like, super hype if you do. Like, <laughs> maybe you can help me, like, <laughs> levitate some of these patients to different beds one of these days. I'd hope I get something cooler than levitation powers, but who knows? Although, although, it'd be really cool to, like, levitate over the crowd while I perform. That'd be awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, it's a basic <laughs> human desire to want to be able to fly. Like, who doesn't want to fly or float or do something like that? That's true. I don't know. But when I finally make my big debut, you can make sure that you will have a uh, front row seat. Well, I, I very much look forward to it. If I can get away from my homework for a second. Like, literally a second. Mateo, if you skip my debut for <laughs> homework, I will literally end your life. I will be so angry with you. <laughs> well, then I will have to let my, my teachers know that um, it is literally under uh, life-threatening duress that I, I must skip out on certain work exactly exactly like forget your sleep schedule this is your little sister hello <laughs> yeah no i i'll totally be there don't you worry <laughs> okay I'm, I'm and i'm sorry by the way that like i'm i'm kind of like uh that i'm kind of short with you sometimes when i uh, when i'm like in the thick of it with all this sometimes i think it'll i think it'll be good to like see you in your element with me away from the grindstone for a while. I'd really like that, honestly. I mean, you've never handled stress well, so I mm -hmm. guess I guess we can just let this slide. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry that I'm snippy with you, too. Mm -hmm. Well, apology accepted, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I guess, are you just, are you up now, or like... How long did you sleep? Um, like for a couple of hours. I feel like I just kind of shut down as a human for a little bit. But now I'm here. Um, I mean, I was going to eat and she like holds up her plate. <laughs> anyway, he, he kind of like looks around a bit, looks up to where like he knows like the rest of the family's upstairs sleeping. He's like, you know, like nobody's going to be up for a little while longer. You think maybe you can. Show me a couple of your moves. I think I could take at least enough time for that. Oh, I'm going to cry. Um, <laughs> I think Lucia, like, just beams, just, like, absolutely beams, like, smiling cheek to cheek, hops up, grabs, like, the spoon that she was going to eat with, <laughs> um, and, like, runs to kind of, like, an open space, and they're, like, dining room area um and it's just like okay 
So honestly, I've been working on this new um, verse. I think it's pretty fire. I think it's pretty good. Um, so, you know, just let me know what you think. Um, <laughs> and I think she's going to, you know, start to like put on a little performance. I think she's like kind of singing and rapping like softly because everybody's asleep. But yeah. I think she's like doing her little routine that she came up with, um, all that. Yeah. Nice. And Teo definitely is inclined to like like whatever you will uh, perform for him, probably. Uh, but he Aww. he definitely is is impressed. <laughs> Cute. Um, yeah, no, I think like she's just beaming still um, once she's done, then comes back, sits down and is like, I mean, something like that, you know, like the group kind of already has like a rock vibe, but I can totally mix that in. Um, oh, totally. Like, r rock and hip hop can mix and have mixed no problem in the past. And I think you're, you of all people would be the one to do that. Yeah, I can do anything. You absolutely can. <laughs> and then he, he, he yawns and then he actually like reaches for his books and like starts to close them and goes, you know, I think, I think I'll be okay if I at least let a little bit of this slide for the morning. Like, I can do a little bit of it when I wake up. Yeah, you should get some rest. Yeah, no, I, th I think you're I think you're right. I think I do need to get some sleep at some point. <laughs> I think uh, it won't make a huge difference if I, if I go to sleep now versus staying awake for one more hour. Yeah, you're just gonna make yourself more tired. Go, lay down, get some rest. Mm -hmm. Will do. Uh, he, he closes up the, the books, loads them under his arm. It's like, and, uh, yeah, I, you have a good rest of your morning, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna eat and then I should probably do my homework. Oh, yes, don't, don't slouch on that now. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm, uh, putting away my homework, you have to do yours to compensate. One of us has to be doing this homework. Okay, that's not fair, but sure, fine, whatever. <laughs> he laughs. Yeah. So, yeah. so Tao gathers up his his books and he he gives you a, a nice sleepy warm smile and a, and a wave as he heads upstairs to to bed. Finally. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. And so Lucia finishes up her food and I think she like messes around on her phone a little bit until the guilt starts to sink in and she's like, ugh fine goes gets her like backpack that she threw somewhere when she came home um and starts laying out all of her assignments and does her homework um since she's awake might as well be productive <laughs> Again, he kind of like that energy kind of like bubbles up again he kind of gives her a warm smile mm. you know, it's, i don't know if i've said it before but I like i'm really enjoying living here with you i mean i do obviously miss home but this is my second home and that's thanks to you mm -hmm. yeah no I, i'm so glad that you've you've made the journey here as well like i've it's been so long since i've seen you or or your mother or uh, or any of your your family as well and i being living across the ocean like this i i originally came for my education uh, but it's it's definitely been lonely before that and i'm i'm really grateful that you're here too i'll keep you company you can't get rid of me probably going to be <laughs> sick of me eventually but until then i'm staying Never, absolutely never. And she she ruffles your your hair, <laughs> tussles <laughs> in a bit as she comes back over. Now, why don't we try some of those chords? I noticed you were gripping the guitar a little bit tight. Why don't we get you to loosen up your grip a oh. little bit as she starts in with <laughs> more of the guitar teaching? Okay, loosen my grip. Well, Violet. I hope you have a fun weekend at camp, and we'll see you here for training next weekend after. Of course, I'm looking forward to it. I turn in and confidently head to the door. Yeah, and you see that uh, Grace is, is further down the hall. They haven't been near the door because they know that Mary doesn't like people listening at the door, uh, but they have mm -hmm. been anxious for you, so they're, they're looking nervously like, So, how did it go? 
the door closes and there's a moment, you know, there's there's like a beat and then Valerie slumps her shoulders and kind of looks exhausted all of a sudden and um and and walks over to them and says it and it went it went fine. I mm. um she she proved of the trip and uh also set up additional training for me the following week, which is which is good. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm here for. So And and they sigh, oh <laughs> I guess I'll I'll have to rearrange the schedule, won't I? That's that's fine. I I think I know what you're talking about and and they give you a little bit of a knowing like um uh, eyebrow waggle like they know about the teachers that you're talking about. Yeah, and I, I nod back. I just acknowledge that yeah. Uh yes. And th- thank you again for for everything for the the coordination and for for speaking to Mary on on my behalf most of the time. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I think it's it's going to be worth it. Like you're you're going to be great. You already have been great and uh, I know that she's hard on you, hard on all of us, um, but I, I hope that whatever she's got planned for you, um, that it helps, I guess. And I, I give a sort of tired but, but genuine smile. Yeah, I, I'm i sure that sure that all of us here are going to be stronger for it. And if they're using some kind of weird technology... What are they using it for? And it can't be just Anne. It's got to be, like, affecting other people, you know? Yeah, and if, like, Cervantes has all this experience from, like, previous tech companies, who knows what he's brought to the table for sure. Yeah. I mean, they had this cool light system, but it, like, stopped after a bunch of uses. Like, it wasn't even any good. (laughs) Sounds like the rest of his products. (laughs) (sighs) Ugh. Fuck, I'm so- ah! I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. mad, but I'm also fired up for you. He's the fucking worst. And we're gonna <laughs> totally, like, win against him or whatever. I was gonna say, like, get him, but that sounds like I want to kill him, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, I but you can, wanna... if, you, if, you, if you have the opportunity, you know you have your mother's blessing, to punch him in the fucking nuts. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna. And she looks determined. Yes. Push me. So w- wait, what? Push me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and she she gives you a shove, like kind of in the, the middle of the chest, like not enough to hurt, <sighs> but like. I'll fix it. <laughs> again. And she pushes again a little harder. You're kind of near the wall of the the school, so you you, <sighs> you hit the the back of the wall a little bit. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Yeah. I'm gonna tell her. Yeah. Yeah. Tell her. Tell her. Yeah. Oh, it's a oh, it's a her. Oh, <laughs> she she waggles her eyebrows a bit. It's not like that. Okay, fair. Yeah, but still, like, even if it is a her, then like, fuck, fuck her, fuck all her friends. Like, just just tell tell her that she hurt you. It doesn't matter. Like, whatever bullshit she's going through right now, it doesn't excuse like hurting you, especially because you of all people go through enough already. Oh, she's gonna find out. Well, you have to tell me how this goes because, like, now I'm invested. Like, <laughs> I, I want to, I want to hear the play-by-play of exactly how this takedown goes. Well, without revealing whatever like sensitive secrets or whatever shit, of course. But mm-hmm. y- give me the gist of it. Alan just grabs Kenzie, like not hard, but by the shoulders, gets uh, their head a little closer, and say, "Don't worry, I'm gonna take it slow." Ooh, and she she has like a little like excited chill at that. You know, my whole life I've been made uncomfortable. And I think I've learned a thing of two.
Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at AuthorX. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen B was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at QueenBE15160871. Lucia slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at Live in a Day. GMing, final editing, and mastering for this episode was done by me, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our ending theme is Lax Instrumental by Humans Win, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com and Freesound.org. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Be gay! Roll dice! An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.